Hey, welcome to another edition of the Workforce Connection. The Workforce Connection is a co-production of the Fort River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Fort River Community Media, and of course, Bristol Community College. My name is Rob Mellion, and I'm the CEO of the Fort River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and host of the show. And every month, what we try to do is to bring you, the viewers, a snapshot of what's happening in the community regarding workforce-related issues. And this month is going to be no different. What we're gonna do for this show, though, is we've been throughout the year talking about various segments of the uh, workforce. I don't think in the last four years that we have been filming the show that we've really talked about the nonprofit industry or the nonprofit sector and how it has been working with its workforce in order to keep the workforce up to date and stay lean and fit. Uh, in order to be productive. So we have invited for today a couple of guests. We have with us Kathleen Shedler uh, Clark, who is the Executive Director for Stepping Stone. And we also have with us Rob Vitello, who is the Director for Corporate Services at Bristol Community College. And we're gonna talk about this because here at BCC, there has been a partnership with Stepping Stone that is helping to uh, educate their employees on various aspects. But at the same time too, what I would like to do with Kathleen is to talk with you about Stepping Stone and why workforce education and why uh, having a, a workforce that is uh, prepared for issues like community uh, customer service and administration is important to you. So a lot of stuff we want to cover mm -hmm. in today's show. But first, thank you both for being on today. Thank Our you for pleasure. having us here. Our pleasure. So, so Kathleen, right to the point. Uh, let's get to uh, uh, a little bit about Stepping Stone Incorporated itself. Uh, I mean, many of us know a little bit about Stepping Stone, but I bet we don't know half as much mm -hmm. as you do. So who is Stepping Stone? Well, as you said earlier, um, Stepping Stone is a nonprofit um, organization. We have been in existence since 1972, which is over 44 years. And uh, the agency has developed over the course of those 44 years. And in terms of um, the services that we've offered, when it first began, it was for servicing um, alcoholic men with the problem of um, alcoholism. And since then, we have both men and women. We have women who have infants. Um, Stepping Stone is a leader in uh, behavioral health and homeless services today. We have uh, inpatient programs. We have outpatient programs. We have transitional programs. We have permanent housing uh, programs. Um, so that what we've developed is a continuum of care so that um, anyone can enter our system um, wherever they are. We meet their needs um, for whatever it may be. If they are in need of outpatient and they haven't really recognized a you know formal um, process where they need to get into an inpatient program, then we have an outpatient program. Um, we serve loads of, um, of individuals who have mental health issues. And we also um, will see individuals with HIV AIDS, um, domestic violence. Um, again, we have pregnant women. Um, we also have projects today that we're running in the Bristol House of, of Correction, in which the men and women who have been incarcerated that have substance abuse issues, we're um, working with them to integrate back into the community and to help them with services and housing um, so that they can you know, return to a better lifestyle. So you're doing, you're kind of like the dark matter. Mm -hmm. I, what I'm listening to you is that Stepping Stone has filled a gap. I mean, a lot of what you were describing used to be done institutionally, and now an organization like yourself has come in there and filled that void mm -hmm. as uh, the institutions stop providing those services. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I think that um, <clears throat> what we've always tried to do is, is we're very community oriented so that we address any of the needs that are in the in the, the city of Fall River. Um, women's services was not ever offered uh, for substance abuse in the past. And in 1988, we started a women's program. Um, we've also branched out to the city of New Bedford. We have programs in the city of New Bedford as well. 
And that's what I was going to ask you is, at least here in the Forever area, and this show actually airs all across southeastern Massachusetts, so it's good that we talk about New mm -hmm. Bedford as well. But the history of, you know, I'm interested to know the connection with Fall River because Stepping Stone obviously is an organization that's known all throughout, not just this region, but throughout southern New England mm -hmm. for that matter. So what is the history, what's the connection with Fall River? Connection in terms of, well, it, we've provided the services, you know, always in the city of Fall River. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great need. Um, we have a community that has, you know, multiple of problems that occur, um, and some of them are all related around um, either substance abuse or mental health. Um, individuals today um, can be affected by the disease. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't affect, you know, one characteristic or one economic level of of of, of back background of an individual. Um, so it, it affects probably every individual family in some sort of way. So let's take a deeper dive. Mm -hmm. What is the workforce within Stepping Stone? Mm -hmm. We have. That's an easy question yeah, to ask. Yeah. Probably one of complicated yeah. one to answer. Well, um, like I said, we've grown over the course of the years. When I first started working at Stepping Stone, we had a total of eight employees. Um, now we have over a hundred full-time employees. Mm -hmm. We have we operate um, seven to eight programs that we have 24-hour coverage, 365 year, um, days of the year, so that um, we are constantly looking to employ uh, individuals within our programs. And we have three categories of individuals that, that work within our, our system. And uh, first is the administrative um, staff that um, helps to organize and, and run the operations of the, the programs. And then we have clinical staff who work diligently to help each individual, you know, work and recover in, in whatever needs they may have. And we also have support staff. And those are the individuals that do all of the maintenance, the cooking, the driving, and all the overnight coverage that we have, like I said, for 24 hours. So over the past eight years, my observation as CEO of the Chamber of Commerce has been that there has, there has been a significant change within the private sector's workforce. Mm -hmm. So my question is, what kind of changes have happened within Stepping Stone over the last five to eight years? Hmm. Well, we see a lot of individuals who come in, and um, unfortunately, um, as you mentioned earlier, we are a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. So we are dealing with um, state funds, some federal funds, and some local funds that we look for the community to help and support us. But we are always behind in terms of being able to offer the positions that we have at the salaries that uh, the people that do those positions deserve. So we're always constantly looking at how can we help those individuals grow and learn um, all the skills that they, they need to perform the tasks that they have on a, you know, the daily basis. So people multitask. Multitask, we all multitask, yes. So that makes me think about some of the lean training that we do here at BCC through the Workforce Center. Uh, why is, and that comes to the question, because this is the Workforce Connection, so why is workforce training important at Stepping Stone? Mm. Well, we value, one of the, the values that the agency has is, is that um, we're always looking to better ourselves. Um, and it starts with we're trying to help individuals in our services that we do is, is to learn and to grow and to better themselves. And we ourselves, as staff people, need to be able to be at the top of our game. And we need to be able to learn and to um, be able to provide the, the skills that we have in the top, you know, intensive care that we have. So we want to be the best. Um, I said earlier that we're the leader in, in behavioral health and homeless services, and that's something that we strive um, to do. We, we always want to um, be the best that we possibly mm -hmm. can, because if we're good at we do, then we can help those individuals that need the help. Well, that goes to your core mission. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. So what were you doing prior to working with BCC as far as addressing workforce issues? We have, um, on a regular basis, we do do um, uh, weekly trainings with our staff. Um, those components are, you know, a basic class that goes from, you know, an hour and a half 
and the subject titles, you know, could be ranging from uh, various um, things from, from you know, it could be working with people with HIV, it could be um, working with people with opiate dependencies, it could be, you know, um, we have a cu uh, cultural diversity um, council, what, well, how can we make ourselves better in terms of that, but it's a tip of the iceberg to, to go to a session for an hour and a half, you know, you learn some things, but, and all of those trainings are basically provided by our staff and, and so forth, so the workforce investment has given us a really great opportunity because it's a series of classes and it goes over a long term and that the instructors are all from the Bristol Community College and um, they are um, certainly experts in their fields and we're excited that um, each of the staff have been able to participate in, in the trainings that we have and they are coming back into the agency excited about what they're learning and starting to actually apply some of those tools um, to our day-to-day -day activities. So this might be a place where we bring Rob into the conversation how was a partnership developed between Bristol Community College and Stepping Stone? Um, sure, it actually was uh, over a, a couple of years uh, because uh, Stepping Stone's leadership stepped forward when there was some funding available through the uh, health care transformation grant, which is really trying to get at our health care system. Uh, and we put together a, a proposal there, very competitive. Uh, we actually were not successful um, because there were so many applications that went in from our region here. But we used that, uh, the work that we had done in that grant to then switch over and approach the Massachusetts Workforce Training Fund um, opportunity. And uh, working with Kathy and her, her leadership team uh, at uh, uh, Stepping Stone, uh, Susan Bennett, and, uh, and Liz uh, from HR, I always have a hard time pronouncing her last name. Mm -hmm. um, and really what we saw is that they really embraced uh, this opportunity. So we really mapped out what they needed. They worked with us on the curriculum, each hot topic that would be covered. And uh, we were able to submit the grant uh, probably about six months ago. It was in uh, March that we submitted the grant for $175,000. Um, the interesting thing is BCC partnered along with UMass Boston because they had the expertise in a particular licensure mm -hmm. training that Kathy can talk a little bit about, but they had 45000 of that grant to, to uh, train people. The remainder went to the different trainings we outlined uh, with them. And uh, the grant was awarded in April and we started training in May. They didn't waste any time at all and as Kathy said they've totally embraced um, the training. But it did take a lot of prep, a lot of time. Uh, by the time we were done I think Liz had a folder that was probably about two inches thick mm -hmm. of all of our notes and all the work we were doing and uh, it was the happiest day of her life when we got the grant and she could file that folder away, mm -hmm. <laughs> stop having to bring it to each meeting we had. So what we should do right now is go to a public service announcement that'll uh, go for the next couple minutes and then when we come back I'd like to talk about what that partnership is and some of the programs that have developed out of it and how your employees have actually benefited from them. So we'll be right back after this public service announcement. I'm an animal care and education intern. I help take care of the animals, I help prep their food, and I also do education programs where we teach kids about a specific species of animals and then we teach them how we would rehabilitate those animals. Co-op gives you experience in the field that you wouldn't necessarily get in the classroom. We are a rehabilitation hospital for sea turtles and seals. Um, we help care for stranded marine animals and we also are an education and conservation center. Having co-op students and interns that are interested in becoming professionals in this field gives us a high quality level of um, volunteer that wants to learn and can contribute um, the basically the information they've gained in their classes and their studies in the field and kind of put that to practical use here. Co-op was an opportunity that I just couldn't pass up. Actually doing it is different than knowing it. Um, so it gives me full-on hands experience that I would I'm really going to need if I want to pursue a career in um, wildlife rehabilitation. I want to help save wildlife and conserve habitats. Because Bristol, I now have experience as a wildlife rehabilitator that will help me further my career. Yeah. 
So welcome back to the Workforce Connection. And today, like I said earlier, we have with us the Executive Director of Stepping Stone, Kathleen Shedler Clark, mm -hmm. and we also have with us Rob Vitello, who is Director of Corporate Services. We're talking about nonprofit education, or in particular, workforce training for nonprofits. And Stepping Stone is such a great model for us to look at in viewing this issue. And they've recently partnered with Bristol Community College and the Workforce Center in addressing this issue. And I want to talk about that partnership now. So, what are some of the programs that you've instituted through this opportunity? Well, I'll go into some of them, but I'll let Kathy mention first about one of the centerpieces, which is the, um, uh, the LADAC training. So you can mention a little bit about what that and why that was an important co cornerstone that we built the rest of the program around. Okay. We have, um, part of our program is, is that we have 10 of our staff um, who are attending the UMass Boston uh, Substance Abuse Program. Mm -hmm. That program consists of um, two semesters in which the um, staff are able to obtain all of the required um, credits for the licensure. So when the um, individual staff complete the program, they will be able to sit for the state license and become licensed substance abuse counselors. And that is just, you know, it's it's amazing, and it's it's so wonderful to see all of them. Um, it's a it's a big undertaking to take two um, semesters. Um, the first semester, there's four classes, so they're doing um, not only their full time job, but they are attending. Um, those four classes and preparing to, you know, do the the schoolwork that it takes to become those um, licensed substance abuse counselors. That is very interesting mm -hmm. listening to this because what I'm hearing is that you implemented self-help. You had mm -hmm. probably a, a gap and a need. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you probably couldn't find individuals to fill the gap, so you implemented self-help through this opportunity. Mm -hmm. That. I hope that businesses are listening to this. Mm -hmm. That is a great model. Yeah, and the, the you know the important thing is is that like we said uh, we want quality care in our programs, and that um, in order to do that, people need to have education, and it's important that they do that. And when we um, had the program. Um, uh, it was announced in, in that we were going to have this availability. We had more people that wanted to attend. Um, we had about five people that were on the kind of like the waiting list to see if somebody would drop out. And every single one of the 10 individuals committed to it and have been participating in it and learning. Now my understanding is, my understanding is that there has been leadership training as well. Why was that important at hmm. Stepping Stone? Hmm. Well, I mean, I always think that um, coming from the administrative roles of, of all our programs, that we need good and quality leaders. And uh, the leadership skills, um, those are something that comes, you know, in time sometimes for, for individuals. They may not have training in that particular field, especially in clinical um, trainings that we have in our programs for our, um, our clients that we serve, they're not, they haven't been trained in, in supervisory roles. Um, they've been trained in clinical roles. So this gives them the opportunity to become better coaches, better supervisors, and they can address any kinds of issues that may occur with an employee. And I think that's important. I think that employees need to be able to address issues with their staff. It's just not about if someone's not doing something appropriate to say, oh, okay, we're gonna terminate you from our from our um, company, our agency, our institution, or whatever it may be. You need to be able to sit down and say, these are the kinds of things that we want you to learn and, and to develop and to, to, to work within our clients and our programs. That's very interesting. Rob, what, do, what do employees learn in a leadership program? Well, I think. How do you uh, become a good coach? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the challenges uh, that Kathy mentioned is as Stepping Stone has grown, they have had these programs develop, and now you even have programming in New Bedford. So part of the challenge is how to get a consistent message and a consistent process for dealing with the intake, dealing with the, the services and the support. So partly what we've done in, in the leadership and the supervisory is looked at the processes and they've actually, all the leaders and the supervisors have really embraced this. So now they get to talk to each other 
which they haven't really had a chance always to do outside of their work environment. And you have people from, who are leading programs across the uh, agency now saying, well, this is the way we've done that. And, and they are mm -hmm. taught core things on how to delegate uh, more appropriately, support, uh, support uh, better performance from their uh, um, staff. And uh, those are the kinds of things that they thrive on. And I will mention, I've probably worked over my four years at, uh, at BCC as being the Director of Corporate Services with over 20, 25 different grants, uh, workforce training fund grants. And I'll have to say, Stepping Stone just got started. We just got started in May, but they've hit the ground running. And uh, they're probably the top as far as embracing the training, bringing back the things that they're learning. They bring in actually <coughs> forms that they're using, and in class they've modified them, got them back out, and they're using them today. So we've really been able to show some early successes, and as Kathy mentioned, now people are waiting for their turn to be able to get into the, into the classes. So it's been a great, uh, great start. We, we couldn't be happier. That's very interesting. Customer service. I'm very interested to know why customer service training was something that Stepping Stone saw as important within its organization. Hmm. Well, customer service is, is one of the things that I think that we all need. We think about, I'm saying that yeah. because we think about that in the for-profit mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. not necessarily in the non-profit hmm. sector. Well, we deal with so many people. I mean, we don't have what you would so-call customers, but our clients are really our customers. Those mm -hmm. are the individuals that we're serving. And we have um, many, many um, individuals who have sometimes difficulty in communicating. So I think that's very important. I mean, I stress in the agency from the top down that effective communication is, is what we want in our agency. We want to be able to communicate consistently um, across all programs that we are there to help I each individual. And um, that's something that you don't usually get in your your day-to-day -day trainings is, you know, how to speak to people and how to communicate with them. I mean, I think that that is, you know, one of the most important things in any kind of company, whether you're a nonprofit serving clients or whether you're in a for-profit and you have customers who come in that you want to, you know, service in some sort of way. That is essential um, to your business. So what is compassionate customer service? Mm, well. Well, one thing I'll mention, uh, Rob, is that um, the work that the direct staff do is very challenging. Me remember the population that Kathy has mentioned. Mm -hmm. We're talking about homeless individuals, individuals with many um, uh, behavioral challenges. So to deal with the clients is a challenge. So to give them the support by you know talking about strategies and tools you can employ to deal with challenging situations and challenging clients customers um, you know that is very very important so to be able to have compassion as your as your you know day in and day out when you're dealing with very challenging situations the overnight staff who's staffing alone a lot of times dealing with issues that come up um, you know they need uh, this this training we've been able to uh, start has uh, provided the basis for them to really uh, be able to serve the clients in a, in a better way. Why did you seek out problem solving as a class that you wanted your employees to participate in? Hmm. Well, again, I think that, um, not to repeat everything that's been said, but... Um, I mean, we, redundant for a reason, <laughs> that's though. That's okay. Because we, I'm thinking about our listeners here. Mm -hmm. Some of them are business owners, mm -hmm. and I want them to hear this from you directly. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is... I think that we've been looking for somebody for four years mm -hmm. to be saying the story that you're you're putting forward today. Yeah, we, we you know, I, I think the challenges that we have come from all of our levels of staff. Um, first of all, our... Our clients have many problems, so we are constantly, um, what the clinical staff is doing is, is working on treatment plans and helping them solve their problems in order to get better and to, to live in recovery and to live into society productively. Mm -hmm. So it starts at that level, but it also starts at the level of problem solving is, is that, you know, we deal with, like I said earlier, with um, 
the lack of funding for our programs, so we have to always problem solve in terms of how can we get something to be done with the least amount of money that we have. That takes special kind of tools. I mean, I think that that's what another thing that I try to instill on the staff is is that when there is a problem or an issue is is that how do you learn how to look at you know the positive the negatives and and look at what are the end results that we want to achieve what are our outcomes that we want to and how can we get to that point so you have to really break down the issue and look at all of the components to be able to you know come to that end result that you want to and that takes some skill sometimes now we're all living with the new FASLA regulations that are impacting businesses across the entire country so my question is where do you find the time throughout the course of a 40-hour work week to be able to fit in all this training. Hmm. You want to answer that, Bob? Well, well a Stepping Stone has made Tuesday training day. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've mapped out, the, the, actually mapped out the next two years and all the training that's happening. So since uh, we took a little time over the summer, but since May, uh, Tuesday mornings have been a cultural competency class and Tuesday afternoons have been the effective supervision class. So um, we continue to refine the curriculum and we continue to get the feedback because uh, we're all about at BCC, we're all about continuous improvement as well. So um, we are also just beginning the leadership training that you spoke about. That is going to go on over the two years uh, so that uh, the staff, so that the leaders really understand what the other training that uh, their staff is going through. Um, but it's really, it does take uh, time and effort. So they've uh, really, you know, it's, it's making it a high priority. And given, even though it is on top of their other work, the fact that people are lining up to take the classes and asking the question, when's my turn? That tells you that they're ready for it and they're waiting. Uh, and Everybody's that they don't looking mind. forward to Tuesday. <laughs> right, exactly. Interesting. And what has been, other, other than you've got a line of employees, which that's fantastic, uh, what has been your experience in implementing workforce education into the daily work week at Stepping Stone? It's been amazing. I think that um, one of the things that, that has helped, you know, over the course of the, since May, since we started it, is that we are implementing uh, the tools that they have been learning at each of those, those classes, and that has already improved our system um, in terms of, of doing and working better with people and being able to understand, um, you know, the skills and the concepts that uh, we need to apply to, to our agency. This has been very interesting. We only have a couple of, about 40 seconds left in the show here. Last thought is, uh, Rob, how would you like to see this implemented with other nonprofits? Well, I think that uh, not every nonprofit is able to apply to the Workforce Training Fund. Uh, Stepping Stone, as a, social, as, a, as a human service agency, mm -hmm. does pay into the, the mass uh, unemployment pool, so they were eligible. BCC is working with a number of nonprofits to try to bring them together as a consortium and look for training resources or how to pool some resources so that we can uh, continue the training. Uh, we also hope this serves as a model for others like STAR and there's a continuum. Stepping Stone has many um, uh, partners uh, in the healthcare field from uh, South Coast to, to STAR and uh, we're hoping that they will also uh, be able to take advantage of this. Fantastic. This has been a very interesting show. Thank you both for being guests. I learned a lot, and I hope the same is true for our listeners and viewers. So thank you very much, and we'll see you for another edition of the Workforce Connection next month.